Is liberty dying where you live? Escape to Keen at freekeen.com. 1947, and Representative Gannon is going to introduce this bill. Since Representative Obama, is he still in court? Is the case get solved? Whatever happened? Uh, I heard the uh, the Airbnb SWAT team took him away. So. Yo. <laughs> 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 Representative Joe Hannon, I'm presenting this bill for the prime sponsor, uh, Representative Cromoth. Um, I'm not a sponsor on this bill, but I've, uh, I've, I'm going to present it anyway. Um, basically, this bill repeals the provisions for state licensure and regulation of hawkers and peddlers and itinerant vendors. Uh, this, I, I have a copy of the application fee, uh, the application for hawkers and peddlers license. Uh, it's a pretty simple uh, two-page document that. Uh, doesn't ask for a lot of information. The address, name, uh, date of birth, mailing address, uh, you know, sex, height, weight, eye color, hair color, distinguishing marks, and then general description of the merchandise someone selling, uh, any states that you've been licensed as a hawker or peddler, how long you've had this license, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and also, if you've been charged or indicted or convicted of any fraudulent or illegal activity or transaction of any kind. Um, so. There are a couple exceptions to having to get this uh, license, and those are some of the things I'd like to talk about today. Uh, one, some of the ex I actually pulled the entire chapter and found some interesting things. Um, this basically, uh, hawkers and peddlers shall mean and include any person uh, who travels from town to town or from place to place in the same town are selling for selling, bartering, or carrying for sale, barter, or exposing thereof any goods, wares, merchandise, either on foot or from any animal, cart, or vehicle, or, and then it goes on to talk about traveling from town to town within the same town. Um, it has to, also has to do with inc uh, people including contracts for replacement or installation of siding in any residence or building, or, and this is uh, the really interesting part, keeps a regular place of business open during regular business hours at the same location, but who offers for sale or sells and delivers personally or through his agents at a place other than his regular place of business, goods, wares, or merchandise. Uh, there are approximately less than 500 people in a year that get this license in New Hampshire. Uh, if I extrapolate the, the money that the state is expecting to lose from the fiscal note of about 24 plus thousand dollars and $50 a fee. Uh, this would actually have to apply to anybody who would sell on the internet, eBay sales. Um, that's a huge number that I'm sure is not being collected. Um, that, uh, that, that does create a bit of a problem. You can't sell on state property without permission. Um, there's also a, uh, any contracts that are formed are considered uh, voidable. So this is, this is something that interferes with private contracts between private individuals in the state of New Hampshire. Um, there are some except exceptions, exemptions. Uh, any person selling a product of his own labor. So if you're a farmer or you're making crafts at home, you're exempt from peddling these wares on the street. So if you make it, you can peddle it. And if you buy it and try to sell it, you have to get a license. So that's one exemption. Another thing is, uh, you know, people, I was first told that this is a problem for uh, flea markets and such. They are exempt. Persons conducting sales of personal goods and their own property are exempt. Uh, church sales and bazaars are exempt, as long as they don't benefit any private individual shareholder. And uh, trade shows are exempt, and people who sell antiques, used goods, or vintage items. So you can go from door to door as an itinerant or hawk, a salesperson or hawker. As long as it's an old item or used, you don't need a license. But magically, if it is a, um, a, a manufactured or bought item that you didn't make yourself, or came from your own home as your personal goods, you must get this license. Uh, there are uh, some more exemptions. Uh, people exempt from getting this license are any soldier or sailor, that doesn't mention airmen, uh, disabled in any war in the United States has been engaged in, or by sickness or disability contracted therein, or since his discharge because of service, and the widow of any such soldier or sailor, as long as she remains unmarried, or any citizen in this state over 70 years of age, shall be exempt from paying the license fees required by this chapter. So. Uh, this is a very, very old law. I'm not sure exactly when uh, the, year, the year it was started. 1931. 1931. Thank you very much. Uh, it, it is something that if, you know, if, if we're encouraging people to do, uh, to do this, um, it, 
it doesn't talk about widowers. And I've been, in the 21st century, there are women in combat, and this really is not fair because it exempts, it only exempts the widow and not the widower of a veteran or a disabled soldier, or, and it doesn't even mention airman, uh, just sailor or soldier. Um, it also exempts people over the age of 70. And there was a representative, uh, who I won't mention by name, but in, in the House, who uh, said, why would you repeal this, this, uh, this license? I get one. I said, well, what do you get it for? And they said they get it for selling popcorn at the fair. Well, they have to pay $50 a year to sell popcorn once a year at a fair, and they have to get a $5,000 bond, a surety bond, for, this, for the Secretary of State's office. Uh, they weren't aware of the bond. <laughs> they just knew they had to pay the $50, which they paid every year for several years after the age of 70, not knowing that there was an exemption for people over 70. So this law takes advantage of the elderly. They don't give you your money back if you write down your age and it's over 70. They take your money and they cash this check. Um, there, are, uh, there are some other uh, little intricacies with this bill. Um, yeah. That's, you have to be a net. You have yeah, to be you'll give the bond if you're bond bond for business. Purposes. Okay. So the old geezer's okay. Well, that's good, but he still had his checks cashed. Um, what was that? Is that the new 50th? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, also, prohibitions in this in this chat in this chapter. Um, no person except as herein provided shall sell or offer for sale in the streets or any other place frequented by the public in the city or town any artificial flower or miniature flag. So it is against the law to sell those outside of a an actual uh, genuine retail establishment that's duly licensed in the state. So you can't and sell them on the corner. Unless you're selling for, the, for veterans. I, I, I was just about to get to that. Permission granted is uh, a special class of people are allowed to sell these in New Hampshire. So I'm not sure this is even a constitutional law uh, according to our state constitution. If someone is a member of American Legion, veterans, foreign court, veterans of foreign wars, disabled American veterans, or even a member of the United Spanish War Veterans, I'm, we, we have quite a small number of those left, if any, I believe. They are allowed to sell miniature flags. And, and they're over 70. And they're over, and they're over 70. Thank you. Um, so we, we, we've got a, a statute that, that affects, uh, it's discriminatory by gender, by age, by, by sex, not by sex, by gender, same thing. And um, it also has, um, yeah, a lot of interference with private contracts that people want to uh, just sell their own goods to somebody else. And it's uh, discriminatory towards people that, that may not be able to make their own products. What if uh, somebody is disabled and they have to buy things and then sell the, the pencils, per se, on the street corner? You know, we have local ordinances that don't permit that, but that's how some people can actually make some money to stay alive. And this is, uh, this is a fairly antiquated chapter, even though we have almost 500 people in the state that get this license. Uh, I, I really find no need for, for keeping it other than a very extremely small amount of revenue for the state, uh, which I think actually impacts businesses more negatively than it helps the state because $50 is an awful lot for people that may only be doing this once a year or, twi or several times a year as an itinerant worker. Um, thank you very much. Any questions? Representative Williams has a question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so, would you believe that, that, that the artificial flower piece actually was revealed uh, in 2011? So there are, there's actually a lot of this law, I mean this law was written during the Depression and a lot of it was, was, has been repealed. But my question for you is, do you see under this law that somebody who, like a Domino's Pizza, a business that has a location but delivers food to people's houses, would be considered a peddler and be required to get a license under this uh, law? Uh, I, I believe it. I don't know if they are actually getting that license. I, if, if you're aware of it, I'd like to know. I went on the license lookup on the uh, the or on the state's websites, and they had all the licenses for all the professions and the the trades, and they don't have a listing for for this. So if you want to find out if your peddler or itinerant worker is licensed, you have to ask them specifically for their card with their signature on it, and they must present it to you at all times. But there's no way to look up these things online. Someone can easily have a forged document. But luckily, within the statute, there is a section that says cop making uh, fraudulent copies of this card that proves that you're registered is against the law. So we at least, I'll, I'll say something good about the bill. It has that protection for people. So. 
that way uh, they can't just copy this on their home computer and, and fool people. Well, Does a question mean for um, So you, you're aware that there's something like 500 licenses? That, less. So, so for less than 500 licenses. So at least the way I read it says that if you keep a regular place of business but you offer for sale or sell and deliver personally or through agents at a place other than a regular place of business, that would apply to me that any business that that has a brick and mortar store but delivers would have to have this license. So it sounds like there's a lot of people without that license. Would you agree with that? Uh, I would not disagree with it, and I would also say that it would be uh, you know a, a double taxation, if you will. There's already these businesses are already licensed, so to offer to have another license for them to have a pizza delivery. I mean, these are people that are not making. No, 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 no. no. At a place. At a place. At a place. Okay. A place other than his regular. Other place than his regular. Right. No. So, in other words, if you if you bring a pizza to somebody's house, that's a place. No, no. I'm selling. But the other. I'm selling at a place. Who offers for sale or sells and delivers personally or through his agents? Yeah. So this would apply. So if 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 we actually followed through and took this law seriously, it would have to apply to. Uh, any business that conducts eBay sales or any online sales, because that is another place. This law was written well before the internet, so they had no idea that that would have to no, apply. No, you're using Amazon to ship it to you. <laughs> you're using UPS to ship it. I mean, you're, I mean, you're using UPS to deliver. Right. They're not, they're not, I mean, maybe with the days when Amazon's ready to start delivering to people's houses, and, and which is they're, what they're, they're talking not, about they're, doing, but that yeah. maybe So UPS yeah. is not considered their agent. <laughs> it's not their agent. It's no. considered it's a, a public They're an ICC Interstate Commerce Act. That, well, the, the federal law kicks But if I right? hire people to put pizzas in the car and bring it to your house, that to me is is 321. I look at your, yeah, I see Roman and Roy. I see what you're looking at. Uh, you know, let will see what the case law has been on that. But I can't imagine. Perhaps it's a restaurant business. I mean, I, mean, I, I know that for instance, the Electrolux guy who comes and does it, he absolutely had to get a hot person for his license. But the idea of someone, if you have a place of business and you're delivering the pizza in town, I, the idea that you need a hawker and peddler's license there, I, 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 I see how you're interpreting at a place other than his regular place of business. I don't think that means at the customer's home. I think that means at a different location, different sales location. I think that's the way I would interpret it, but as we all know, lawyers can have a field day with anyone. Okay. So, um, well, I think this is going to be an interesting bill to, to look into. I don't know if we'll have the time to do all the work on it. But I think it's probably time to look at the structure. Of the is this a really good? It is really good. Uh, where's it going after us? Finance probably. Ways and means. Oh, ways and means. 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 Fee. Yeah. Fee. At the very least, I think it needs to be drastically. So, Representative Kidd, do you sell your artwork uh, in places other than your place of business? <laughs> somehow you're you're going to tax me. Somehow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to pay too much that I know that. I the quick, you know, I, I live in Nashua, so it's a, you know, it's right on the border, etc. And without exaggeration, if I say eight different people come to my house from selling magazines to wanting to do, you know, my lawns, to roofing, to every single thing, my first question is, do you have a license? Many times they don't and they go away. Now, if this law is repealed, I can only imagine the people coming into to the state. Now, one thing that the squad does is it takes information down from if you go up to get a hawker's license. So if you're having a problem, let's say with magazines and you don't get what you paid for, the state literally has that particular type of information. If you don't have any information on people, a lot of people will be taken advantage of. And it scares a lot of people away from coming into New Hampshire because they realize you need a hawker's license. And I'm not sure what local police do, but 
if you don't have a hawker's license and somebody complains, they probably can somehow track you down. If you have a hawker's license and you cause trouble, they, they can track you down. To get rid of this completely, this is open season. I mean, we're going to be one of the only states in the United States that doesn't have something. Now, if Nashville is a large city, wants to put in an ordinance, fine, Manchester and Concord. But how about Lee or Rochester? They don't, they don't have that mechanism. Right, and to be clear, that, that that's why you see even in the bill where it talks about the local one, that this, this law is going to be statewide, but that notwithstanding that, then yes, each in the local community can then have a more stringent. But how process. many licenses does a person need? 50, 100 to do business in Nashua? In Nashua, uh, Nashua does have a hawker's uh, a license. Right, so in other words, you're in Nashua, you, 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 the Nashua hawker's license would carry. And I'm not worried so this about This is for small towns that don't, have not bothered oh, to. Oh, it's open season. Have to regulate this. And it's open okay. season. Can I respond? Further question, yes. Uh, I, I uh, th this is, uh, I mean, obviously you can, all of towns like Lee, my town can get their own uh, regulations and ordinances, and it, it could be difficult for having a different regulation in each town. But let me tell you a really quick story about uh, my own father, and he had a janitorial business, and he didn't uh, have a store or an, a website. He just he was he was out of work for many years because of an injury. Uh, we were extremely poor, and he started knocking on doors uh, up and down the street, uh, saying, you know, do you have some work for me? And he didn't have a business license. He didn't have a contract with anybody. He just had. Uh, Volkswagen bug, he ripped the passenger seat out to make room for a vacuum cleaner and a mop bucket, and he had to go door to door doing that. This is something that does give some small businesses and people that can't, uh, you know, if they, if they had to get a business license to start a business like this, they would be required to get a $5,000 surety bond. They would not be able to start a business like this. He's doing this on his own. It, it is a business. He made it, he became, when he, as soon as he got paid, he, he went and got a business license, but in the beginning, he couldn't do this. He couldn't even afford. He barely had money for the gas for the car. He had to walk from door to door. But then the he person's got... writing the check out to his name. Yeah. He doesn't need the bond. Okay. Well, he would have. He would have needed a license, <laughs> and he didn't even have that. I mean, this is this is a pretty. Uh, you know, it's it's just one more impediment to having a small business startup start. Fifty dollars might not seem like a lot to to most of us in this room, but somebody who has to go start knocking on doors to see if you can do some some yard work or some siding or cleaning people's toilets like my father did for 30 years. $50 is a lot of money to start up. And I just thought I'd share that with you all. Isn't that the same Marco Rubio's father was in here? No, 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 we're not related. <laughs> is this the same story? No, no. I found it in the GOP uh, manual. But, no, it's, it's a true story. <laughs> I think, I think, uh, uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, the more I think about it, I mean, I remember uh, when I had my store, somebody would come in and say, and sell me, uh, uh, you know, carpet or, or uh, things of that nature. So, you know, we were standing on cement all day long. And they were hawking, and it just came in. That was it. I knew he wasn't, wasn't coming from a store. He was a middleman and, and buying based on the orders I took. And I kind of think that... <clears throat> Even though I understand uh, the difficulty uh, your father had at the beginning, um, I still think there's value to uh, the license uh, as, as a consumer protection type of thing. Because uh, anybody can come in and show me that book, and you know, and if I'm caught unaware at that time, I actually might give it two hundred bucks and then never see it again. But if he has a license, I'm more more comfort with. Uh, Someday I've never seen the question. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's an observation. And, and so I'm, I'm agreeing. Uh, I'm expressing a, if you want a question on me, do you think that's true? You're asking me. He's the person to Technically, you're right. You are asking the question through me about knowledge. If I know that I felt better if there was a license involved. Would you, would you agree uh, that if some licensing needs uh, you? I would believe it would make you feel better. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, that's, that's not an insignificant thing. <laughs> no, no, my no, no, no. Further question? <laughs> Further question. 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 Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, uh, thank you. Uh, for the record, my name is Kevin Moquin, and I'm an attorney with the Bureau of Securities, but here today representing the Secretary of State on this bill. And uh, I think the Secretary of State's position basically is, is very similar to what was expressed by Representative Herbert, that we think that there is an important consumer protection aspect uh, to this, that in many cases there may not be accountability uh, with regard to these uh, hawkers and peddlers if there's not a statewide system in place of licensure, especially as has been mentioned in the smaller towns and cities. Um, I don't know if there are any cities offhand that don't have it, but I know there are, there are several small towns that don't have their own ordinances. So, um, so we think it is an important protection. Uh, another aspect, as has been mentioned, in those places where uh, there aren't ordinances in place, it does provide a base level of protection and uniformity amongst those uh, towns, uh, those smaller towns. Um, Representative Hanlon pointed out several kind of interesting uh, things that, because it is an old bill, uh, there are some things that uh, probably need updating. Uh, we went through a whole process before this committee last year updating our uh, securities laws. Uh, and they're not quite that old, <laughs> so uh, there may be some updating needed, and we would be uh, obviously more than willing to work with the committee or any subcommittee that would be set up uh, to look at this uh, statute. And with that, I'm willing to take any questions. Representative do you have you uh, have you heard anything? from the Attorney General's complaints or of people not getting licenses? We haven't heard uh, that I'm aware of from the Attorney General recently. Um, I think our, the largest amount of inquiries we get are from local police calling because they come across a peddler and they're not sure whether they are authorized to be doing business. So, so that's, that tends to be where our phone calls come from. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So you guys, you you guys are the ones who are, are issued these licenses. Yes. So if someone comes, like, when they come and get their business corporation, and then they just walk down the hall, and, <clears throat> and the locker and colors is over in the same building. Ah, uh, it's across the street actually. It, it's at the sec. I, I'm sorry, not the bureau of securities, but the secretary of state's main office is where the right license across the street. Where that's right. Where LLC right. Too. Yes. So right. In the same building that you get an LLC, you. You have to go across the street to the Secretary of State's main office in the State House. Oh, in the State House? Yes, yeah. To get the hawklers and peddlers? Right, right. And in some cases, I mean, in, actually in many cases, there's not necessarily going to be a, a business established. No, I understand that. Right. I'm, sorry, right. I'm just trying to, you know, right. Right. how user-friendly this is. So somebody has to come to the State House to get this? Can you do it online? Um, you can submit it by mail. I'm not sure we have it set up yet to do online, but you can submit it by mail. You can download the form and then submit it by mail. So it doesn't require you to actually physically come to the Secretary of State's office. Representative Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for speaking to us. So the, the law, the, the current existing law requires that the Secretary of State's office provide assistance for issuance. Um, that particular piece was written in 1941, so they probably didn't anticipate the internet. Right. But do you uh, do you have have, have you considered uh, a mechanism to make it easier for people to apply? I'm not sure there's any plans at this point, and and again, I think you know part of it would be you know possibly going electronic, completely electronic, um, because it is you know I mean we do I think in 2015 we had 515 licenses issued. So it, it's not a giant part of what the Secretary of State does, but it's an you know, important part nonetheless. Uh, the mail-in 
uh, of the allowance for having the application mailed in makes it easier, but in this day and age, uh, it may be something we need to look at. And I'm sorry, uh, Representative Long, just to answer your question uh, from earlier, I believe you have for Representative Hannon on the issue of like a dominoes or something like that. I think the interpretation the Secretary of State's always had is that sells and delivers at a place other than his regular place of business. The sale is not taking place at the same place as the delivery. And here it says sells and delivers uh, at a place other than his regular. So we've never considered, you know, that if somebody makes a sale at the, you know, at the Domino's uh, office or location, and then they go out and deliver it, that the sale and delivery is taking place uh, at the same place. Yeah, but that's a little fuzzy because he can't. It is. He can't it is. Give it over to the house. It's, it's certainly it's certainly interpretational, and uh, we. But on the other hand, we haven't either gone after anyone like a, a Domino's, or nor has anyone showed up to say that you know you really ought to be licensing them. But again, it, it you know the language is old, and if the uh, committee wants to look at that, you know, we'll certainly give our assistance. So how about food trucks? Food trucks. Are, um, are those? Are there the food trucks? Yeah. I mean, they're. I, right. I believe there's probably maybe not 500, but probably a significant number of food trucks in the state. I believe food trucks are included they within are that. Absolutely included. In yeah. Well, I would say it was the right. floor. It's meant to apply. Back in the old days, it wasn't. You know, it's like you see more in New York with the guy. You know, with the. Uh, the umbrella hot dog. Well, when this law was written, it was for the guy with the pencils and the cup. And well, so like about no, I, I didn't bet you back then they had that same hot dog. Just the nuts. Nuts and pretzels. Yeah. yeah. I think now that that's absolutely nuts. that's what they were trying to, <coughs> trying to pick up. <laughs> yes, Representative Kitch. So Thank you. On the uh, <laughs> do you, I, I, I understand all the, the small individuals trying to get into this. I, I got that. But what worries me, and maybe you know the statistics, of the large like magazine companies coming into the state, does every individual must get a license? Can a large magazine company come into the state and, and do business right across the board? And do you know the amount of, let's say, national people coming in here, going door to door to door, compared to small vendors. Yeah, my understanding is this actually doesn't apply to the people who come door to door uh, selling magazines. And the reason being is you're, you're actually getting a subscription. Uh, I'm speaking with the Secretary of State this morning, as well as the person who handles this. You're getting a subscription with a magazine. You're not actually getting a product into your hand. So you're paying for a subscription. The product will, will follow later. So our understanding is that this doesn't actually cover magazine sales. Uh, but it certainly covers the things like uh, you know the door-to-door -door salesman, the the person selling um, uh, vacuum cleaners, you know that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah I can see. What that's the only nuance there, isn't it? Yeah. Right, and it, again, you know, something that may need to be cleared up. Question: Following up with that food truck, would would they need some sort of other license though from food HHS? Licensing HHS or something like that? So I don't know for certain, but likely. Nashua for years has a food truck license. Manchester has a food truck license, but outside of the small city. town, small towns, it would be it would be a good idea to have a license for the small town to have a 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 small town the health officer. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah, health, I can think of the health officer. Yeah. And, you know, like I know my town, we, well, we made the code enforcement health officer the same person. But then sometimes the fire department gets in to be the person. For instance, my son, somebody on the, on the other dog in here, the one thing the town wanted to do is the, is the fire department had to come in and make sure that all the rooms that I'm renting the window is a certain size. So you people need to get out. out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But you could not rent a room that the window was a certain size. Any other questions? Yes. Um, thank you for letting me ask a question, Mr. Chairman. Um, would you believe that during the past 10 fiscal years there have been no prosecutions uh, under RSA 321 and only nine under RSA 320 in, in the last 10 fiscal years? 
That would really be an idea. Thank you. Yeah. Let, let's call it what it is. This is this is the consumer protection bill that the way we protect you is we tell you you have to get a license just so that we can take it away if you were bad. And and so that you have to, you know, demonstrate, yeah, if that you haven't done anything bad and that you're you know legitimately out there. Mr. Chairman, it's a question for the chair. And, and uh, while this bill may, our three sets of regulations may provide some benefit for the consumer, uh, is, and it's clear that the RSAs are uh, outdated. Yeah, these are it, I, I, It's unclear to me whether updating the RSAs would be, this is the right vehicle for doing it. Uh, it would be easy for us to turn this bill into a study committee or a retain or interim study and have the Commerce Committee work on it in September to fix it up. One drawback with that is is that we would not be passing anything this year. They would have to wait until it be introduced to some next year. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Thank you. I uh, do have one more card left. Ian Kuhn. Today was your day to be here in Congress. Hello again. Um, very few people uh, enjoy being approached by the magazine salesperson or the guy who's selling the meat out the back of his truck or whatever the, the situation. Uh, these things happen in various places and I don't think anybody really, really likes it. But ultimately, uh, to me, the solution isn't government regulation but private property. If you have private property, you get to control who comes on that private property. And if I don't want solicitors to come on my private property, that should be my decision. And if someone comes on private property that, without an invitation, then that's a trespass. So I think that solves uh, that issue there. So I support this bill uh, in that it would reduce regulations, allow uh, people more freedom to, uh, to run a business, as uh, Representative Hannon pointed out. Uh, licensing fees, although in New Hampshire they tend to be lower than some other states, are still a barrier to entry to entrepreneurs and people who want to uh, raise up their status in life. And so I don't think that uh, the state needs to be standing in the way of that. It's bad enough that the cities and the towns can, can uh, regulate this. So to me, the bill doesn't go far enough. Um, I think the cities and towns should be prohibited from that and we should leave it to private property uh, to be the regulatory factor here. I did hear from Representative Herbert a concern about uh, sort of the fear of an unlicensed vendor. You know, well, don't you feel better if the person has a license? And how many times have people dealt with licensed um, occupations, like a plumber, for instance, and found out that the plumber, even though he's licensed, was dishonest? So, you know, even though there's a license involved, it doesn't necessarily mean the person you're dealing with is on the up and up. It just means that that person has jumped through some government hoops and paid the government some money. So, I don't necessarily think that because someone has a government license makes them more trustworthy. And of course, a classic example of uh, what people will use where, well, we need the government to regulate something would be food service, for instance, it was mentioned a few moments ago. Um, I can go out onto Central Square in Keene, New Hampshire, get some hot dogs and cook up some hot dogs on Central Square, and I can give them away to people without any kind of licensing whatsoever because there's no money changing hands, so therefore the state all of a sudden doesn't care about the, the hot dogs that are being given out. It doesn't matter that I'm, you know, I could be putting people's lives in jeopardy by not cooking the hot dogs or whatever, whatever it is that I'm, I'm giving away. But as soon as I charge a dollar for that hot dog, well now all of a sudden the health code is very important and we need to protect the consumers. Obviously it's not about consumer protection, it's about obedience and it's about revenue uh, for the state. So let's let the market decide based on private property, based on reputation. If you're concerned with somebody and what they're offering you, do your due diligence as a consumer and do the research necessary. We now have the information at our fingertips. If you want, you can Google whatever company is, is pitching you. Um, but ultimately, I think private property is the solution here. So thanks for listening. Thank you for taking that position. Yes, Representative Thank you for coming before us. Sure. Um, it was brought up, and I know you just said about the hot dog analogy, which I think is very good. Do you see that there is any type of benefit for consumer protection with this law that's in place right now? 
Um, I, like I said, I think that consumers should be protected based on market uh, functions. So uh, whether it's researching a company or whatever the offer is uh, on the internet or contacting some sort of independent group that might certify. I don't have a problem with certification. I think that's a good way to sort of cover the idea of licensing without having it be a mandatory thing from the state. So in some businesses, like in uh, like uh, the IT field, the technical field, you can get various different certifications. There's a Microsoft certification. There's a, a various different ones. And so I can present and say, oh, well, I'm, I'm Microsoft certified to do this and this and this. And then, of course, you can contact Microsoft to verify that that claim is true. So let's let the market decide on these things. Thank you. Representative Hey, Mr. Chair. Uh, would you believe that some of, uh, some of the state licensing laws could make consumers lazy and not uh, look into someone who may have a license or may not? Yeah, absolutely, I would believe that. President Tucker, would you like to ask a question? I just, just, I just have one question. I just thought of it, given the time of year. Do we know if Girl Scouts have a license to go from <laughs> door to door? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. When I was looking at the uh, the ordinance or the the statutes that are proposed to be removed, I was I was thinking in my mind not of the Girl Scouts, but of sort of the classic uh, lemonade stand, or uh, for instance, uh, like, you know, a young kid who wants to shovel some snow or something like that. And it does seem that those sorts of things are exempt. But with the Girl Scouts. Uh, the Girl Scouts aren't selling the product of their own labor, so I think that's an excellent question and yet another reason to repeal these statutes. This this law is basically goes back to you know we've had you know obviously this committee has never we never passed the mandatory and making car, uh, contractors do license. We've uh, been lucky to do that because we agree with you that, that um, at the end of the day, just having license doesn't mean you're competent. And I would venture to say this license has nothing to do about competence, has nothing to do about health codes. This license is solely for the purposes if you're going to come and knock on little old ladies' houses, you take advantage of that reality. We want to at least know that you're doing that. And we want you to come forward and tell us that you're doing that. Okay. Mr. Question for the Chair? Yes. Uh, the Supreme Court has ruled that people can't be forced to self-incriminate. To self -incriminate. So the criminals would have no duty to get this license. Only the law-abiding citizens who would have nothing to, to gain by not having it. Oh, so not saving the end of the day, the, the intention of this law is that when the little old lady calls up the policeman and said, I, this guy promised he was going to come in and I gave him a thousand dollar deposit and he came in and didn't do anything, the police can go after him for illegally, not only charge him for you know, the, the, the frauding of the money, but they can go after him for this, this kind of thing. I mean, the merchandise, again, is the merchandise you give them shot of merchandise. I thought it was interesting that you, <laughs> as long as you say it's used goods mm -hmm. or vintage, you're just exempted, it's just exempted. And so, it's, you know, it seems like, that seems like a huge exemption and a wide open exposure. But again, this is all it is, is just, it, you know, you know I'm, I'm surprised the police chiefs are not coming in here and saying you know, they like this bill, but they probably have to use it. Well, it's probably not a big, big issue, would be my guess on that. But uh, further, as you pointed out, it is an issue of fraud, and in which case, the person should be prosecuted for fraud. Uh, the license isn't going to stop the fraudulent. It's, you know, I, 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 when we passed the Do Not Call here in New Hampshire, and it's a ten thousand dollar fine, and I remember getting a call from a local merchant in my town that she was just she just started a barber shop. And she was calling, dialing for dollars, right? Calling people up and saying if they wanted to come in. I said, you know, I, I don't, this is great, you know, I'm, I'm good business, but and by the way, you are violating the law, okay? I'm not pursuing it, because I, I only make laws, I don't enforce them. But I just want you to know, by the way, that, you know, you're, you're supposed to be checking to make sure before you call somebody up on the phone and try to solicit them, that, you know, if they're on the do not call list, you're, you're potentially exposing yourself to a $10,000 day fine. Uh, just, just for a point of uh, clarification, uh, people that, that we don't have a right, uh, criminals don't have a duty to uh, to register 
firearms if they're criminals. Uh, there was a case in 1967 that was decided in 68, Haynes uh, v. U.S., where someone was uh, convicted of possession of an unregistered firearm, and uh, they were charged with failure to register the possession of that firearm. And uh, because of the Fifth Amendment, they were not required to get that registration. So you can't, can, you can't make a criminal or someone who is knowingly causing, uh, you know, committing a criminal act, get a license uh, in any way whatsoever. So they would not. They may be able to charge them. They may be able to scare them or shoot them off their porch. But there is no way they can get a conviction uh, when you consider the Supreme Court precedent. And if they cannot make you get a firearm license, I'm sure they could easily uh, argue this that you don't need a, a hawker's or peddler's license. So this is only going to hurt the law-abiding who have to, who are not doing any, uh, not trying to commit any crimes. So. But that's part of. The the law-abiding, that's why law-abiding is not opposed to the, you know, the, why you know, they care. But so they like being able to come in and say, I've got a light, I've got this license. They, the police know I'm doing this. They, the local enforcement know I'm coming here. And that's that's part of their sales tool. It actually makes the, the potential consumer feel more comfortable because right. they have a license, even though the license only means they pay 50 bucks. They pay 50 bucks to, to admit that this is what they're doing. Remember that woman came in the other last year was, who, who was upset about union leader newspapers driving the headlights down her driveway, and and she wanted us to do something about stopping union leader from delivering the five o'clock in the morning. Stop your paper. <laughs> no, there was the other baby. She did. She had already oh, stopped union leader. Oh. The other somehow the street was that the lights went right into her bedroom. Any other questions? Thank you very much for your testimony. It's a pleasure seeing you. Thank you. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, John Kujak, who's in support of the bill. Greg Moore, representing AFP, is in support of the bill. Brent Aldrich, uh, from Gilbert, is in support of the bill. Representative Rollin Hall, is also in support of the bill. And Conan Salat is opposed to it. Oh, okay. Uh, seeing no more cards, we will propose to the We'd like to invite you to visit Freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com. I should be in Keene, New Hampshire with the Free Staters. <laughs>